Good morning, everyone. My name is Nadja, and I'm a senior director here at Ginkgo, leading the, the team for developing new partnerships for production of biomolecules. I've been at Ginkgo for about four years now, and before that, I was the CEO of my own startup in Brazil. As well, I was a, I was a professor at Universidade de Brasilia, which gives me over 15 years of experience in East metabolic engineering. And my name is Beatriz, or Bia for short. I am a scientist in our microbial engineering team here at Ginkgo. And for the last three years, I've, plan I've been planning, executing, and leading projects for customers from different industrial sectors. Um, I'm now happy to support our commercial team too, making better partnerships. And I'm a chemical engineer by training. And prior to Ginkgo, I was doing my graduate school work in Canada. Awesome. Well, so let's get started. For those who are joining us today, are very aware that there is market demand for sustainable production of natural ingredients. In certain geographies, consumer product companies are also feeling the pressure from regulators to seek bans on chemicals that expose humans or the environment to undue risk. As the name suggests, Natural ingredients are produced in animals, plants, and fungi, and extracting them from these sources can be costly, can be inefficient, and subjected to volatile supply chains. Luckily, precision fermentation provides an alternative route to address mounting consumer and regulatory pressure. For some folks joining us today, this is not news. You may already know of ingredients on the market produced through fermentation, like penicillin or squalene and vanillin. But you may be curious if bioproduction is an economically viable route for the ingredients in your portfolio. Ginkgo can help you evaluate whether the eco unit economies for bio-based versions of ingredients in your portfolio are worth the R&D investment and risk. We can also work with you to transition to bio-based production without having to, do, to invest in CapEx. We know the technical economics of each ingredient would be to be carefully considered. And we will spend the next 30 minutes sharing how Ginkgo's platform can address R&D risk and how we can enable access to fermentation capacity. As Bia mentioned, we invite you to ask questions or reach out to us uh, to discuss a specific ingredient that you have in mind. Yeah, please leave your questions as we as we talk in the Q&A chat below. I can see some of you are already using, that's awesome. Uh, and then Nadia, just to make it clear, are you telling us that Ginkgo can produce and supply natural ingredients to our customers? Oh no, that's a common misconception. Let me take a few minutes to tell you about Ginkgo's role in the value chain. Ginkgo does not manufacture products or ingredients. As a platform company, we provide R&D services to companies that make ingredients. We are proud to, to be partners with our customers, helping them achieve their innovation goals without being their competitors. Ginkgo thrives on customer success. We've been doing partner R&D programs since 2008. That matters for you on our call today for a few reasons. First, we invested in building highly automated labs that can perform all units operation of engineering microbes in high throughput. We know that engineering complex pathways and microorganisms require a significant trial and error, and Ginkgo leveraged those risks using scale and automation. Our partners benefit from assessing our labs to sample large genetic design spaces quickly and efficiently. Second, we've gathered tons of experimental data using highly automated labs for more than 200 partner programs. This data that connects genotype to phenotype, where function and activity feeds our computational models for each program we start. In addition to this huge proprietary experimental data, We've developed a vast range of assays and microbial engineering protocols that perform robustly at scale. 
Yeah, no, that's super cool, especially as we all know that biological R&D is inherently risky. And working with a partner that has such a great bank of biological data and know-how can improve the chances of success and accelerate the development of your project without having to spend money, CapEx money, to build your own labs. Yes, that's correct, Bia. And we work with partners who have varying levels of experience doing biological research and development. Some of our partners do not dedicate their R&D facilities for doing synthetic biology, but are interested in exploring bio-based routes for production of their ingredients. So Bia, as a scientist research, can you give me a couple of examples on customers with such profiles that you have encountered within our platform? Yeah, sure. So we have, as you mentioned, partners with different profiles um, that we help. Uh, we have on our platform, for example, chemical companies that are exploring fermentation as an alternative route to manufacturing a product that they already do. Or some, some companies are extracting biomolecules from plants and they don't have any in-house cap capabilities for precision fermentation. Oh, great. And I know also that we have partners that have very robust biological R&D capabilities and expertise in-house. For those partners, they find that Kinko services complement their own. And we have services that serve both types of partners, right? Those services are designed to deliver specific outcomes. For the partner who is just starting to consider bio-based production of natural ingredient, we help them identify feasible targets and get to a proof of concept strain prototype. In some cases, we can also generate sample of a given bio-based molecule for partners to test in their application before starting a program that would transition production to a microbial strain. For partners who are already developing a strain to produce an ingredient, they turn to Ginkgo to push that strain performance towards commercially viable titer, yield, or productivity. Depending on the strain's starting performance, the metabolic pathway and target molecule, Ginkgo's may do as little as prototyping the pathway in one of our optimized chassis strains. In other cases, the partner's goals may require enzyme engineering to do deep bottleneck or to unlock a rate limiting step. And still, in other cases, an in silico pathway diagnosis and optimization might be required. Later on, Bia is going to walk through a few examples of our partnerships where each of these services were leveraged in some combination. Finally, we can't forget about our scale-up capabilities. As I told you before, Ginkgo does not manufacture products, but we are proud to help partners bridge the gap from bench to commercial scale. Our fermentation and deployment teams regularly demonstrate a fermentation process from 250 mLs to 3,000 liter scale. They then assist with tech transfer to your chosen CDMO partner. Depending on the ingredient you plan to manufacture, the process might require special equipment to extract or purify your final product. We've got a network of CDMO partners that we can introduce you to early on so you are definitely set up for success. Yes. So as Nadia mentioned, we have customers with different profiles and some of them have plenty of experience with precision fermentation. Uh, we've had the privilege of working with many, many partners who have their talented R&D teams that have dedicated years and years to engineering their strains, to produce ingredients at scale through fermentation. On this slide, you'll see a few examples of partners we've worked with on this with this profile. Each of these, LIGOS, Solve, and Visolis, have their own biological R&D functions and and still, the Ginkgo was able to provide expertise and scale to support their efforts. Um, for these partners who have who are already actively harnessing biology, we routinely offer services that can be transformative for their product development. So Nadia will now introduce you to some of the services, and then I'll walk you through a few case studies of programs we've done for partners to improve their own strains. Thanks, Bia. So uh, first we can engineering on one of our chassis trains 
to express the genetic pathway for the ingredient you are producing, where a couple of examples are listed in this slide. We've engineered strains with high flux through key metabolic pathways, and therefore, if your ingredient molecule derivative from one of our high flux strains, we might be able to demonstrate a significantly higher titer just by inserting your favorite pathway branch into one of our chassis. Second, we can diagnose the pathway using our computational tools, as uh, you see here on our slide. Our systems biology team models how different genetic edits along a mood step pathway influence the engineered strain's growth and production rate. Often, strains that are engineered to produce a certain molecule lose robustness and performance, resulting in a slower growth and prolonged fermentation time. Our pathway diagnosis services recommends engineering approaches aimed at optimizing production and growth. And another very cool asset that um, we are showing on this slide is our proprietary database. In fact, our protein DNA sequence bank is much larger than public ones. The, the ones in purple on the left are the public available ones, so Uniprod and CBI. And the ones in the bar in green represent our own internal proprietary database. So this means that when we work with our partners, they're getting proteins and enzymes that are not available anywhere else. And we also have our own software tools that we develop and continue to improve to mine and explore these sequences efficiently. That is indeed awesome, Bia. And what's super incredible is that since we are an end-to-end -end platform, we can bridge those diagnoses and our large database for enzyme and pathway engineering. This is where the combination of our AI models and foundry services really shine. We can start with a seed sequence of an enzyme and our AI models will recommend the enzyme's designs to be tested. As you can see here on the left-hand side of this slide, that top performing enzyme identified in our screening, here highlighted in red, it's very different from our customer seed. And that particular heat enabled a 21-fold improvement in catalytic activity. We can also efficiently test various pathways designs using our high throughput gene design, build, and test workflows. The data generated from each round of the design, build, and test cycle are inputs into the next round of designs to be tested. As you can see on the right hand side of this slide, the outcome of our pathway engineering work led to a six-fold improvement in titer. This is an excellent example of how we can partner with customers who are looking to get more of their target ingredient from their production strain. The last service I'll call out here is the on-target strain optimization, which combines classical methods like evolution and random mutagenesis with our proprietary technology. This service could be an excellent fit for partners who are dealing with six strains or who are looking for no GM approaches to improve strain performance and robustness. We have a proprietary closed system that automates adaptive laboratory evolution. Using these, our partners can adapt strains to grow on alternative feedstocks and tolerate harsh fermentation conditions. Our partners, also can assess our proprietary encapsulation and ultra high throughput screening tool called NCAPS to unlock the potential of mutagenesis. Bia will walk you through an example of how a partner leverage NCAPS to optimize their production strength for a natural flavor. Yeah, thanks, Nadia. And while I'm talking, I encourage you to ask questions. Uh, we'll get to them at the end of the, the talk. And even if inquire us how you can access our chassis trains, our pathway diagnosis service, and the highly automated labs that we just showed you to overcome your R&D challenges. 
So I'm going to start with a case study that feature our ENCAPS or encapsulation and screening technology. And I'll provide over, an overview of how that technology works. Uh, but first, some context on the issue here. Our partner runs an industrial biotransformation process to produce a natural flavor. Um, so, but the strains that they are using um, for their bioproduction process had limited yield because the strain would degrade and metabolize some of the ingredient as part of the toxicity response. That's very common with microorganisms. Um, this partner knew which degradation genes to target to improve the yield, but rational strain engineering is not an option because they wanted to fulfill some regulatory requirements that um, did not allow for genetically modified products, so using a non-GMO approach. That's where NCAPS enable rapid strain optimization using classical methods only. So how does the technology work? NCAPS is a high, it's a ultra high throughput screening technology that can screen millions and millions of strains all at once. Uh, for those of you who are familiar with biological ND, you might be thinking, oh sure, I could put some bugs through a fax machine and screen all those variants in high throughput. But let's say that your biological product is a live microbe that is secreting your natural ingredient. You need a strain that hyperproduces this molecule to bring your cogs down, and facts alone wouldn't give you much information uh, to characterize rates of excretion, for example, or growth condition, or grow your bugs in uh, interesting fermentation conditions. With ENCAPS, what we do is we encapsulate each strain variant, each mutant, in its own nanoliter reactor, which with re relevant um, cultivations that mimic the fermentation parameters. Um, each circle that you see in the picture in the slide is its own nanoliter reactor with that is started by encapsulating a single cell mutant. Um, so the whole culture that grows there is a clone of each other. Um, and what we do is we link the desired performance uh, of these train with a biosensor, so a fluorescent signal. Depending on the activity that we're screening for, uh, we can have increased activity or a loss, uh, increase in fluorescence or a loss in fluorescence to detect the activity of interest. Uh, inside the nanoliter reactor, the cells will proliferate and secrete the product. Uh, we pass these nanoliter reaction, reactors through an adapted fax machine, and those with the greatest change in fluorescence signal can be sorted out. This also allows us to uh, release the strain, um, to recover the strain from the nanoliter reactor for validation in secondary assays and to characterize the desired target. So for this particular challenge, partner's challenge, the one where the strain was degrading part of the product, uh, we use NCAPS to quickly sift through a large library generated by random UV mutagenesis. Um, our team designed a, a degradation assay compatible with our nanoliter reactors, which is what you're seeing on the panels to the left. So you see on the first row, you see the control where the product is being degraded. So the product correlates positively, like linearly with the fluorescence. What you're seeing below is after our screening, you see that the product remains inside the nanoliter reactor much more. It means that it's being degraded less. Uh, so after we screened the library uh, and identified the strains, we saw a 15% improvement of product yield and tighter and industrial scale. Thanks, Bia. I just want to highlight a few things that are very special about this. We have to think that we are in an era where we have affordable and fast ways to generate a lot of genetic diversity from a starting strain. Mutagenesis is a well-known technique for many and many years for strain improvement, and you might uh, as well want to design and build large combinatorial libraries. I think the tricky part, and we all know that the bottleneck is figuring out how we can do screening of those huge libraries quickly. With NCAPS, there might be some upfront work to design a fluorescence-based assay for your ingredient. But once that is complete, the mutagenesis and screening happen very quickly because we are used tried and true biological methods and equipment. So we can typically deliver strains with dramatically improved performance validated through in vitro screening in seven to nine months. The other reason why this technology is so special is that it's compatible with a broad range of microbes. We can use NCAPS to screen any of your favorite ingredient producing bug. Additionally, 
We've already developed fluorescent-based biosensors for a variety of molecule classes. So in many cases, our partners can leverage our biosensor library, reducing the time for assay development. Yeah, thanks, Nadia. It is indeed a really powerful tool, and it's been uh, very popular with customers uh, lately. So I'd also like to walk you through a different case study that highlights how one of our partners leveraged one of our chassis strains, our pathway diagnosis service, and our strain and en enzyme engineering services to hit a very aggressive technical milestone. In this case, our partner, Fetalon, makes these beautiful natural food colorants using microbes. Uh, these colorants are typically found in fruits and vegetables like beets, for example. And to make these natural ingredients accessible to more customers, Fetalon sought to optimize their microbial production strains. So they already had a starter um, producer strain that was able to make small quantities of the target molecule, but not enough to go through commercialization. Um, the genetic pathway to make these compounds has a common precursor uh, in plants that is also found in many microbes, including our fermentation-friendly yeasts. Through previous R&D programs for partners serving different end markets, Ginkgo had already engineered strains to produce high titers of this common precursor that came, comes from the ShakeMate pathway. So we have our own ShakeMate chassis strain. Our first strain step on this program was to input um, the later steps on the pathway and to test the food colorant in our chassis strains. And even though our chassis uh, successfully yielded the partner's target molecule, the production was nowhere near their target titer. And then what we did was using our metabolic models built on experimental data and from fermentation modeling, our pathway diagnosis tools recommended two different approaches uh, for achieving the milestone titer. Our first hypothesis uh, involved protein engineering on the pathway terminal enzymes to improve their stability. And the second, um, the pathway optimization suggestion was to fine tune a gene expression for maximal flux towards the final product. Taking these recommendations, our team embarked an iterative enzyme engineering route on the terminal enzymes, the first hypothesis. Each round was informed by machine learning guided models built on top of experimental data that Ginkgo has been accumulating over the last 15 years to train these modules. This approach alone led to a three-time improvement in titers of the target molecule, just with the first hypothesis. Then, um, our as I mentioned, our computational tools suggested tuning expression of accessory genes and genes that were way less obvious, just marginally related to the pathway. Our foundry is able to generate hundreds of strains with different combinations of this gene expression, so pushing or pulling the expression of the suggested genes. And this hypothesis alone uh, also enable a three-time improvement in titers. So combining these two approaches, plus using the chassis strain that Ginkgo had already built, um, that enables high flux through pathway precursors and stacking all the beneficial mutations uh, resulting from other uh, workflows in the same project, uh, led to a 22-time improvement uh, in titers compared to the starter strain, enabling our first project milestone, which is very exciting. Uh, we are currently in the process of implementing other pathway optimization uh, tools and other recommendations from our computational work to achieve the next project milestone. Our pathway diagnosis work indicates that our approaches will close the gap between our partner's final target for commercialization. Thanks, Bia. It's very exciting to see that Fitalon is bringing better options for food colorants into the market. I know that the team here at Ginkgo is excited to be able to deliver on our partner's intermediate objectives using a combination of our services. Yeah, it's also exciting that it makes the prettiest cultures and petri dishes around too. Indeed, that's very true. Well, we just went through a few examples of how we've enabled partners who already have been have a production strain and ingredient that they are working on. Let's shift gears a little bit. We've also had the privilege of working with partners who are embarking on bioproduction for the first time or looking to produce an ingredient via fermentation for which the genetic pathway is unknown. For example, Sumitomo leveraged Ginkgo's platform for their biological R&D. We've been helping them shift some of their ingredients towards fermentation-based production. 
Sumitomo is a large multinational company, but we also work with startups who are similarly figuring out how to best invest their capital. Rather than building out the synthetic biology R&D lab, small companies can outsource that work to us and focus on their product formulation and application. This is, for example, how Archaea leveraged Skinco platform. We understand that these are carefully considered investments, so we've designed services offerings that aim to demonstrate technical feasibility. Bia, can you give me some examples of how customers who do not have precision fermentation capabilities are leveraging Ginkgo's platform to develop their own products? Yeah, sure thing. So one of our partners, as a food and beverage company, so no precision fermentation capabilities, uh, identified a product producing tiny quantities in a tropical plant. Recognizing the potential of this ingredient to differentiate their products from others on the market, they sought R&D partners who could help them bypass plant extraction and manufacture this ingredient industrially. Um, and though the final molecule, the ingredient itself was known, the pathway to produce it in its native source had not been fully elucidated. And this is where the Ginkgo R&D services came in. We apply our foundry scale throughput and our proprietary data on various en enzyme classes to test and discover a wide, wide range of potential pathway steps towards a target molecule. Uh, while we're doing that, we also identified all the pathway bottlenecks, side products produced due to enzyme promiscuity, for example, and intermediates that, high, that had high toxicity. And then through iterative steps of uh, strain improvement, we tackle each of these challenging reactions one by one. Ultimately, we added this very long plant pathway into a fermentation-friendly yeast strain. The graph that you see on the right shows the relative product distribution in early stages of this program, the column to the left before enzyme engineering, um, and then versus the optimized train where our engineer enzyme and pathway modifications enable a high accumulation of the desired target product, which makes scale up and downstream processes much easier. Awesome. So just keep in mind that for partners who are curious about whether an ingredient produced in nature can be explored without harming its native source, we welcome to start the conversation with us. We are your partner for discovery through scale of process development and eager uh, to set you up with a CDMO partners earlier so you can make sound of R&D investment decisions. In addition to feasibility, partners must consider scale up early on. For natural ingredients and specialty chemicals, two manufacturers or CDMOs can meet product volume needs. But each ingredient comes with its own product extraction to purification methods, which we like to say it require different pots and pans. Ginkgo is happy to help partners to navigate the CDMO ecosystem early on, to identify any constraints on fermentation capacity or scale up process capabilities. When it comes time to develop a scale up process, Ginkgo's deployment team can help build you the bridge from bench top to commercial scale. Our deployment team will gladly help you transfer this process to your favorite uh, CDMO. So talking about commercialization, now let me walk you through one of my favorite case studies that is already hitting uh, final customer's shelves. I really like this example because it shows the power of using synthetic biology to achieve targets that chemistry alone couldn't reach. So I'm going to set the stage by asking, um, what if you could smell an extinct flower? Um, well, you can uh, talk about product differentiation here. Uh, that's exactly where our partner, Arkea, who is a cosmetic ingredients company, and it's a supplier for the fragrance brand Future Society is doing. So for this program, our foundry scale really came through. We started by identifying flowers that no longer exist in nature, but are preserved and cataloged at museums like the Harvard Herbarium. We took tiny samples from these plant tissues to our own labs. We sequenced their genomes and used our software tools to identify gene clusters that were likely associated with uh, the production of volatile compounds. We then refactored those gene clusters um, 
into microbes, into our chassis strains, so that they would overproduce the putative fragrance molecules. By running small-scale fermentations in our automated systems, we extracted samples of each of the fragrances of each of the molecules produced by the gene clusters, um, ran our broad analytics uh, capabilities on them to identify the molecular fingerprint of the flower perfumes. Um, so we went from an extinct flower plant tissue to knowing exactly the molecules that this plant would produce to produce, uh, to make their scent. Uh, then come the artistic part of this project. Arkea then took these molecules, uh, these samples with a nose, sort of a wine sommelier, but for perfume. And they formulated the line of fragrances comprised of the scent molecule inspired by the extinct flowers. I agree, Bia. This is really a neat case study. It's super cool to see how Ginkgo's platform has enabled totally new products through our pathway discovery and proof of concept strain prototyping services. I actually already got my favorite extinct flower scent. Have you tried yours? Yeah, I also have definitely have a favorite. <laughs> super cool. Well, and I think you have one more case study that you want to walk us through. Yeah, so this last one has some similarities to the examples that we have already gone through. Uh, but in this case, a partner approached Ginkgo with the aim of producing a high value pharmaceutical ingredient, um, a triterpene that is natively found in plants. This pathway was particularly challenging as it's very long, it's 21 steps, and parts of it had already been patented by a different institution. So our team kicked off a proof of concept program to develop a yeast strain with higher flux through the terpene pathway to the precursor of this particular pharmaceutical product, which is 2,3-oxidosfolene. And then to produce measurable titers of an agreed upon interesting intermediate molecule. In just eight months, we identified the most efficient strains for producing, for production of this key intermediate product. So we went from just knowing the plant pathway to having a full proof of concept to yeast strain in just eight months. The reason we can move so quickly was because we leverage outcomes from previous programs. So we only had to express the first seven steps out of the 21 uh, in actually three different prototyping strains uh, with varying flux through oxidosqualine. So we actually did three prototypes in eight months uh, and we could then pick the best one to carry forward before committing expressing the whole very long pathway in a single organism. This program was also uh, benefited from some enzymatic discovery and characterization work we had done for a different program. Uh, some of the enzymatic pathway, some of the enzymatic reactions uh, toward the partner target rely on cytochrome for P450 enzymes. And for anyone familiar with this, knows that they are hard to engineer. Um, and the native versions of these P450 cytochrome enzymes tend to have low activity. So in the program that, in another program, we have discovered accessory enzymes that are very efficient to facilitate higher activity to P450s. And we could incorporate these ex accessory enzymes into this product, project to increase the target of the final molecule without having to do any additional protein engineering work. So our next R&D program that is highlighted in uh, orange in here, will partner with the same partner, we'll leverage machine learning models and our metagenomic libraries um, of enzymes to discover and optimize the full long pathway towards uh, economically attractive titers of this pharmaceutical ingredient. Thank you, Bia. What I like about this case study is that it demonstrates the power of working with a platform. Each program we do for a partner generates experimental data that can be applied to future programs serving entirely different end markets. In this case, prior programs generated engineered chassis strains. The partner could save time in strain development by assessing these chassis strains, each with carefully calibrated floods through the pathway. So, for those who are listening today, we hope you, you've come away with a better understanding of Ginkgo and how we serve partners looking to produce commercially available ingredients using precision fermentation. Our platform and data assets can complement our existing R&D efforts. And for partners who are embarking on this path to a more sustainable ingredient manufacturing, 
we can be your end-to-end -end partner from discovery to scale up. I would like to finish up by sharing a bit about our business model and how do we partner. Our partnering approach is designed to align incentives. We seek R&D fees at the cost of doing the technical work and seek downstream value share that is contingent upon the product that we helped to enable being successfully commercialized. So we really want to make money when you successfully commercialize a product that we've enabled. As I said in the beginning here, Ginkgo, we work for our partners to be very, very successful. So Nadia, one question that I get frequently asked by customers is our IP philosophy. How does ownership of strains and the work done in our projects with partners works at Ginkgo? That's a great question, Bia. Uh, our approach is that we work to ensure that our partner has exclusive rights to use the developed strains to produce and commercialize their product from these strains, while Ginkgo maintains the right to reuse its learnings from each program to improve its platform and advance its mission to make biology easier to engineer. We are happy to discuss this in a further detail over a call. Yeah, and I think now we have some time for some questions for the audience. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Uh, Let's see. Um, do you want to start by ask by answering the reutilization of data? So someone asked, we talked a lot about reutilizing data between programs. Can you guarantee that my competitor would not benefit from the R&D that I paid for? Yeah, we see this question frequently and we truly understand our customers' concerns. What I usually say for the companies within uh, the industrial biotech space is that uh, we are just not working with doing small molecules for, uh, in the bio, right? We have also on the platform, for example, pharmaceutical companies and that's the standard we are working to ensure that there's no sharing on information between different projects for different companies. We have that capability and we take it super seriously. We've developed system internally that flag information so that it cannot be shared and data that results from one customer's program does not get into uh, another program. Yeah, so no leakage among competitors for sure. So I can take the next question. Um, it's what was the process in developing the lower viscosity strains for biomolecule production? So I'm assuming the low viscosity that uh, the person meant was our low viscosity aspergillus strain. So we do have some proprietary filamentous fungal um, species or strains that ferment regularly in a regular stir reactor, which is really awesome. We use that a lot for, for example, uh, organic acids or protein expression. So that came from um, Dutch DNA, a company that Ginkgo acquired a couple of years ago. They spend, I think, over 10 years developing these strains. The modifications are broad and they're not just genetic, they're ju also in process. So they were developed um, in parallel, both by rational and untargeted um, approaches. Um, and now we use that strain. So it's not a single answer. It's a very long work that uh, Dutch DNA did and that Ginkgo uh, now uses. Um, that is certainly very useful to, uh, as I mentioned, organic acid and uh, protein applications. Awesome, Bia. And maybe you can take the next one as well. Uh, we got a question on how do we sort the cells to produce the nanoliter scale reactors? That's for yeah, that's a yeah, that's a great one too. It's very very cool. So I cannot get into too many details, as you may imagine. That's proprietary technology. Um, what I can explain is that we have a way. So the nanoliter reaction reactors are actually made of some viscous, gelatinous mixture of materials. Um, so what happens is we can uh, encapsulate single uh, cells uh, with inside those nanoliter reactors with broth, with mediums for, the, for them to grow. So we don't encapsulate full, col full cultures, we encapsulate single mutants. Um, that is done through some microfluidics work, some uh, uh, very smart liquid handling techniques with the gelatinous material that creates the capsules. Um, 
And the important part is that the the because they're gelatinous, they're not a full barrier to, for example, um, air or liquid. We can tailor that depending on the application, and we get medium in there as well. So the cells can grow inside the nanoliter reactor, as we mentioned. Um, what else? I got the great yeah. one that I can take it. Uh, there is a customer saying that uh, their product is based on plant extracts. And uh, actually, they would like to identify the molecule that is responsible for mode of action. Can Ginkgo help with that? Uh, certainly. And we have done that for drug discovery and also for molecule discovery applied to our egg uh, proper, uh, applications. And uh, we do have analytical methods where we are able to identify the molecule and uh, use that to do pathway discovery, prototyping up to the commercial scale. Yeah, that's a, that's a great one. So there's another uh, question from the audience asking how we modulate expression at scale. So there's two ways to think about this. So one is, uh, at industrial scale, no fermenters, and that depends on what the customer wants, right? So we've worked uh, in projects where the customer does want an induced pathway, for example, um, and that's the choice of the customer. Uh, we input whatever fermentation KPIs they want to use at us. And we had other customers that said, no, this needs to be um, no induction um, pathway, for example. So we can do both. And it really depends on uh, how the customer wants to ferment their product. Another way to think of scale that I don't know if that's what the person that was asking the question meant is a uh, number of strains, right? We just showed uh, an experiment that re required uh, different levels of expression of different genes uh, in hundreds and hundreds of strains. So that's where our high throughput cell engineering platform um, is really great. We can do thousands of transformations aut automatically, uh, no pipettes involved uh, uh, weekly. And we can do combinatorial libraries of different promoter strains or different uh, expression um, strategies, uh, do random combinatorial or rational too. We've done both and both work because we can do hundreds and hundreds, or I should say thousands, thousands and thousands of clonings uh, weekly. <laughs> Um, so there's another interesting question here. Uh, do we only work with yeast? Can we handle no modern organisms? Absolutely. We work with, uh, we work a lot with yeast E. coli. Those are common industrial chassis. I just mentioned that we have filamentous fungal as well. Uh, we work a lot with Pichia, but we handle some weird bugs in the past too. So we do have capabilities to do very bespoke, very um, new, uh, no model organism work where we develop our own tools to uh, optimize it and to automate it, for example. I'll take uh, probably the last one. Uh, our chassis strains kept separate from the commercialized strain from partners. Uh, so what we do, and as I mentioned, we do have chassis strains with higher flux through uh, our key metabolic pathways. And what Ginkgo has developed is uh, sync metabolite that it's like an end uh, for those chassis strains. What we usually commercialize, it's uh, strains that go further those, those pathways or those sync metabolites, meaning that we plug our customer pathway, we optimize it downstream up to the titers that make sense for their cogs. And then uh, those are the strains that are commercialized. Well, Thank you everybody who attended today. I hope uh, we were able to answer uh, some of your questions. If not, feel free to contact us. We will be happy to jump into a call and answer any further questions or talk to you about your future projects and ideas. Have a great day.